quilt versus sleeping bag, which one is right for you? What's up guys, my name is Thor. Here on this channel we talk about all things backpacking tips, tricks, gear reviews, and all kinds of videos. If you find any value in that type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel and turning on your bell notification because my channel is very current. I'm releasing videos every single week on various topics. So make sure you don't miss out on a single video. Now let's get a little more comfortable so we can sit back and chat about which is right for you, a quilt or a sleeping bag. Okay, to make sure that we have a very clear understanding of where I'm coming from, you have to understand that my personal backpacking story is different than yours. Mine has gone in a few different phases. First phase was Boy Scouts. The gear that I had then was an army surplus backpack, a five or six pound zero degree synthetic sleeping bag, which was super heavy, roll up foam mattress from Walmart, which was super cheap, but you might as well just sleep on some leaves and some sticks because it's more comfortable than that thing was. And then I shortly after that, upgraded to a self-inflating pad with a built-in pillow and that thing was nice. It also weighed 47 pounds, but it was super comfortable. <laughs> then after that, I get into high school, I fall out of backpacking for a while. Went on a service trip for my church, I came home, I got married, and I wanted to get back into backpacking, but I knew that technology must be updated for backpacking gear. It just had to be. So I started to search. I looked on YouTube. I looked on the internet. I just did random Google searches and I found something that was really confusing to me. There was this new thing called a backpacking quilt or a sleeping quilt. And I was like, a quilt? I know what a quilt is, but what's a backpacking quilt? Do I need a backpacking quilt? What, 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 what? I was confused. Just as a lot of beginner backpackers are when trying to decide between a quilt or a traditional style sleeping bag slash mummy bag. This is a topic that's never going to go away because sleeping quilts and sleeping bags have their place because at different times and in different conditions, you're going to want one over the other. But in this video, I want to just cover some of the basic differences between a quilt and a sleeping bag for those of you who are beginning and those of you who maybe are looking to make a switch in order to have all of the facts for you dive deeper into making that final decision. Let's go ahead and get out the sleeping bag and the quilt that I have for you today. I think a good place to start is going over the basic anatomy. So anatomy is the study of structure. We're gonna go over the structural differences between the quilt. We're not gonna dive into fill power and weight and all of that quite yet. Let's go over the basic structure and move on from there. So I think that a good way to do this is going to be to start at the foot end, go over the features and work our way up. So as you can see, there's an obvious difference between these two bags. One is completely closed and one has a slight opening in the bottom. As you can see, this can be tightened or loosened as much as you want in order to seal that off to imitate the sleeping bag or you can open it up to have a little bit more breathing room. They do make quilts with a sewn foot box if that is your style. Now for me personally, I'd like to have the option, open it up when I need some more ventilation or if I get super hot or sweaty and just need to cool off. Okay, so as you can see on this foot box, this is a pretty typical quilt design. This is a UGQ Bandit 20. It's gonna have a quarter length zipper that you can unzip if you desire to open up this bag. There's a drawstring cord that you need to loosen up on both sides, which will allow this to lie flat. Now, in the reverse order, if you want to cinch this up, you just pull the drawstrings, cinch them down, and then you just link that zipper together. And now you have a foot box similar to that on a regular sleeping bag something that, you, that UGQ puts on their quilts in order to do this a little bit more efficiently is they put a clip that seals off that hole even more. Pretty much any mummy bag that you're gonna get or sleeping bag is going to have a closed foot end with no zippers and nothing but down or synthetic filling. So it's nothing too exciting, but if this is your preference, a quilt can have that. So don't let the closed foot box 
turn you away from either of these bags. Well, as we start moving up on these bags, you're gonna start to be noticing significant differences between the two. As we go up the sleeping bag, you're gonna notice you're gonna have a zipper on either the left or the right side. Sometimes these zippers are one that closes and opens or it has a dual zipper like this Kelty Cosmic Down 20 that can open either way in order to ventilate if necessary. Like I said, here's that zipper that runs all the way up the side of this. All the way up the side, this bag is enclosed. Now let's grab the quilt and check it out. As we move up the sleeping quilt, there's absolutely nothing as far as zippers or closure systems on this. So this is one of the first very significant differences between these two styles of bags. So as you can see, with these splayed out, they look very similar in anatomy from the back side. But what the big difference is, is this is gonna be open and not have any insulation or any fabric behind your head or your back. In a sleeping bag or a mummy bag, you're going to have insulation behind you. Now this is where one of the concepts of down or synthetic feathers comes into play. The way that you stay warm in a sleeping bag is not directly from the feathers, but rather the air from your body heat that's getting trapped within those feathers. If you're thinking about the concept that the air is what's keeping you warm, this will make total sense for why quilt manufacturers did what they did. When you compress down, you lose insulation value. Quilt designer said, so why put, why keep that fabric and why waste all of that expensive insulation and wait there if you're not getting the full capability of what that down has to offer. So they cut out the back and saved you a ton of weight, a significant amount of money in most cases. So let's talk about the top of the bag. On a sleeping bag or a mummy bag, you're obviously gonna have a hood, which is gonna help trap heat and keep you warmer. On most bags, they're going to have a cinch closure that you can pull this around your face to keep you even warmer. On this particular bag and on all of the bags that I've ever owned, they have this thing called a draft collar. A draft collar simply is a piece of fabric with a small amount of insulation that drapes across your upper chest area and around your shoulders to prevent any drafts from getting inside your bag and chilling you at night. On a quilt, it is an option to have a draft collar just like on my sleeping bag. It just costs a little bit more money. You have to get it customized. Some quilts come with it on. This one was an add-on feature. It again, it has a feature that you can cinch, but rather than having a hood, it's going to be around you this way. So the draft collar is going to be right here. You're gonna have nothing over your head. Okay, so now that we've gone over the basic anatomy of both a sleeping bag and a quilt, we can now talk about why some people are choosing one over the other. As you could tell as we went through it, there was a lot of fabric missing where this had fabric. There's no hood on a quilt. There's a hood on here. Extra fabric, extra zippers, extra material. What does that equal? More weight. A quilt in almost every situation is going to be lighter. And I think that this is one of the main reasons that people go with a quilt over a sleeping bag. Some people love having a hood and that's awesome. Stick with a mummy bag because this is going to have the hood to keep your head warm. It's going to have the extra fabric. If you like feeling like you're in that tight warm cocoon and you just can't go without that fabric, then this is gonna be something that you should look at over the quilt. Cost comparison between a quilt and a sleeping bag is really hard to compare because this is a completely different fill power than this. This is an 850 fill goose down, and this is a 550 hydrophobic duck down, which is very low fill power. But the reason they did that is because it's much cheaper. For example, this bag you can get for around 100 to $150, depending if you're getting the small, regular, or the long. This is the long bag, and I believe it comes in at just under three pounds, which is pretty lightweight for a sleeping bag when you're considering a lot of the other options, but it's not as light as you can get. Now, if we look at this quilt, this quilt, depending on the different customizations that you get, can range from about 220, upwards of about $300, depending on all the features, like I said. Don't compare these two bags exactly together. A quilt and a sleeping bag are gonna differ in price, and there's gonna be a significant difference in weight. I would say that if you compared this 
to a similarly rated fill power that this would be cheaper. There's less fabric, there's less zippers to use. It just comes in at a lighter weight and a more budget friendly alternative. If you're comparing goose to goose and not goose to duck, and you're comparing 850 fill to 850 fill and not 850 fill to 500 fill. All that fill power is, is the amount of down that they're putting inside the sleeping bag. So don't allow all the mumbo jumbo that's out there in the backpacking world to confuse you. Fill power is just what's going on the inside. There's a lot of controversy with quilts. Are they comfortable? Do they keep you warm? And I can tell you from personal experience that a quilt keeps me warm. It keeps me wrapped around. I don't ever feel like I'm getting freezing cold because I don't have that wrapped around me. Something to note with a quilt is you're going to need an adequately insulated sleeping pad. Sleeping pads are rated on a system called the R value scale. The higher the R value, the colder the temperatures that you can sleep on that pad and stay warm. I use the Nemo Tensor insulated pad, which has, a f which has an R value of about three and a half, which is good for three seasons. So about 20 degrees is what they say. Now, something like this Nemo, Nemo Switchback, which has an R value of about two, would be good for summer months and some of those shoulder season trips where it's starting to dip down a little bit, but it's not getting below freezing. Just keep in mind, whatever conditions you're gonna be backpacking in, make sure that you have a sleeping pad that is adequately rated to the conditions you'll be in. Now, I would give similar advice, and have a similar response with a sleeping bag. I still think it's necessary to carry an adequately rated sleeping pad for the conditions you're going into. Now there is an argument that there is insulation here, there is fabric, it could keep you warmer. It's not something that I've ever personally experienced that I've noticed this massive difference between the two, but just keep in mind, know your conditions, keep yourself safe, and educate yourself enough that you're not putting yourself in any compromising positions while on trail. All right, I hope that that was beneficial to you guys today. I hope that it wasn't too much information, that was just the right amount, that you feel like you can make an educated decision between a sleeping quilt and a sleeping bag for your backpacking and outdoor adventures. Personally, I'm gonna go with the quilt nine times out of 10. The only time that I've used a sleeping bag is when I go into very cold temperatures, going to be dipping way below freezing, like in the teens or under, but I'm a backpacker that's not all about getting out when there's a blizzard. That's not something I'm super concerned about for the simple reasons of weight, cost, and customization. Being able to customize your quilt to you ensures that you're going to get a quilt that you're gonna keep for a long time. Now, if you're, going, if you're thinking about synthetic versus down, just buy once and cry once. <laughs> Just save up a little more money and get down. It's gonna last longer, it's gonna be able to pack down smaller, and it's gonna be lighter weight. Now these are all of my personal opinions. If you have a difference in opinion, that's okay. We can differ in that. I think that there are merits for synthetic versus down, but for me, it's always gonna be a down fill. If this type of video is something you found value in, please smash the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this, and be sure to catch my video every single week. Backpackers, thanks for stopping by.